It's now time for Mark Hankins. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Uh, he will show you the things of Christ. Well, and that's so what we Jesus were studying. said about him in yeah. John 16. He will show you things to come. Yeah. And so we were studying uh, Paul's revelation, and then we went through the Ephesians 1 prayer, and then we hit Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. So we hit a few different translations of that, and y'all know Ephesians 2, 4 through 6, right? right? But God, who is rich in mercy... For his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, he quickened us together with Christ and raised us up together with him and made us sit down together with him in heavenly places. In Christ. And if you took it to verse one, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, seated together with Christ. So we were studying that. Then we hit the Amplified Bible where it says, He made us alive together with Christ. He gave us the very same life that yeah. He gave to Christ. The same life. Yeah. And so the same life. And we were raised up together. <laughs> we were seated together with Him. Far above. Far above. And the spirit of wisdom and revelation kicked in. So you were meditating. You were, you'd been talking about it. You're meditating. You're singing about We're it. We're studying it. Studying We're looking at it. Meditating on it. And something exploded. Yeah. And at 17, I saw myself made alive with the same life. Woo. Same life. Resurrection life. Same life. Same identical life. Made alive together with Christ, raised up together with Him, seated together with Him, and I just had a vision and I saw it. And I saw, not just everybody, but I saw me. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> I like to say the death and resurrection of Christ is a group picture. <laughs> the first thing you look for in a group picture is yourself. So too many people say to see the group picture, but you need to see yourself in Christ, in that picture. So I saw myself made alive, raised up with Christ, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit hit me so hard that I started laughing because <laughs> I was no longer fighting for victory, but I was fighting from victory. So now my faith had a new factor in it. I'm fighting from a place of victory. I fight from up here. I don't fight down here trying to get up there. The <laughs> grace of God already put me up there, and I fight the fight of faith grace. in the light of the grace of God. Hallelujah. And I started laughing. And I laughed. That's the first time I can remember laughing like that. And people today, they say, well, you know, he laughs. How come he's laughing? You have people mock you, you know, because you laugh. Hey, he's laughing. Hey, they just don't have any revelation within uh, uh, them. I always say, listen, camel breath, if you <laughs> saw what I saw, you'd be laughing too. <laughs> Are y'all still here? Come on, if you saw what God did for you in Christ, first thing that happened, man, you'd have such joy. You'd go, look at me right there, made alive, <laughs> raised up with Christ. That's me. <laughs> I'm not looking for everybody. I got to find myself in there. Hallelujah. So when I saw myself, I went, ha, 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 ha. You say, who are you laughing at? <laughs> I'm laughing at the devil because I'm far above seated way up here. Woo! I'm not trying to get it. Jesus got it for me. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. I just started laughing. <laughs> the word is alive. I remember meditating on that verse 
Galatians 2.20, when I had asthma, I would, I would have asthma like continually. And some nights I could not even sit down or lay down. I had to sit up to breathe. And I get these scriptures and I go through those healing scriptures that are in the healing book. And one of them is Galatians 2.20. And I saw myself, Mark, that the person that was afflicted with that asthma mm. couldn't breathe, mm. crucified. Mm. That sick person is mm. crucified with Christ. My disease stayed on the cross. Yeah, My disease went to the head, to, you know, and defeated Satan. Mm. Hallelujah. Was defeated by Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And I rose up with Christ without it. There's, this, there's one translation, what is that? Um, Christ took me to the cross with him, that old sick person, mm -hmm. that old whatever person, and I died there with him. Now it is no longer my old self, mm -hmm. but it is Christ himself wow. using my body. Wow. I like what T.L. Osborne said. He said, uh, little I moved out and big Christ moved in. Come on. <laughs> Come on, sick I moved out and healthy Jesus. Healthy Ill Jesus, Jesus is in, in me. Amen. Defeated I moved out, victorious Christ moved in. Amen. Or something really interesting that you said that in, um, in the Jewish faith, that when someone was very sick, yeah. That they would actually do what? They would actually... Well, they had a prayer, and it would be change the name. It would change their name. Which was their uh, sick identity, whatever. So we're going to change the name. Yeah, because you, you stayed you're sick. You're no longer cancer victim. You're no longer, you we're know... We're going to change your name. Change your name. Because you're no longer to identify with that sick person. And you put a new name in there, like the healed, you know. Hallelujah. And so they call you by that. They see you that way. Hallelujah. I'm not that, suffering from that guy this in, syndrome uh, or whatever. That, in that movie called Schindler's List yeah. is he would actually make a new passport, yes. a new identity for the Jews that work for him. And so uh, he'd give them a new passport, say, you're not the same person, you know, that they're trying to, yeah, I got a new passport. New name. A new identity. New birthday. Hallelujah. And so what happened years, years later, I went to a restaurant. And, and it, uh, it, with that passport, they could pass out of that yeah, country. Yeah, control. Across the border yeah. into freedom. Yeah. And with our new identity. Yeah. Come on. They can't it passed hold out of darkness into light, yeah. out of death into life. Hallelujah. Yeah. So your, your faith must have your identification with Christ as a major factor. Right. Actually, even uh, Philemon verse 6 says that the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. And so uh, the Amplified says, I think it says, the Amplified it says, every good thing that is yours through your identification with Christ. That's what it says. All right, now, so I went, knowing what happened with this revelation, I went to a uh, restaurant years later, and the first time I had wasabi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, this first time I had wasabi. So you know what wasabi is? That green stuff that you get like with sushi, you put it in the soy sauce. So the first time I had wasabi, uh, they warned me about it. They said, watch out for that green stuff because it's very hot or powerful. They were telling me, be careful, don't get too much of it. So I said, well, I'm from Texas, so I eat jalapeno peppers, so I'm not afraid of whatever the green stuff is, so give me a double portion. So they gave me a double portion of green stuff, and I took my, whatever it was, sushi or egg roll, dipped it in the soy sauce, got a bunch of the green stuff, and I put it in my mouth to eat it. <laughs> Within about three seconds, the wasabi went straight to my brain. <laughs> I don't know how it knows where to go. I mean, it didn't go to my knee or my elbow. That wasabi went to my brain. When it went to my brain, I had an experience with wasabi. <laughs> 
it felt like my head's going to explode. So I'm like, ah, oh, call the doctor. You know, my head's exploding. Wasabi. <laughs> <laughs> so later on, I was meditating on the scripture and the spirit of yeah. wisdom and revelation yeah. came up on the inside of me and hit me in my brain. And I went, wasabi. So, <laughs> so you see that the, that the Word of God is not just Woo! some dead thing where you're gathering information. It is alive. It's got the life, resurrection life, it and explodes. it will hit you in your brain yeah. <laughs> and change the way you think. Hallelujah. In other words, uh, the Word becomes experience. Experience. You experience yeah, revelation yeah, knowledge. Yeah. I remember listening to Brother Hagin preach on this spirit of wisdom and revelation. He was talking about getting in the spirit, like you could walk from one room to the other room, pat, you know, get in the spirit. And I went to sleep that night and I woke up with another asthma attack. And that night I got up and you know, when you have a spirit of revelation, the Holy Ghost talks to you <laughs> and he helps us to overcome. Mm. And so the word was in me. And I was stirred up. And this time, I got so mad. I said, how dare you? Hmm. And the Holy Ghost said, that's a spirit of infirmity. Take authority over it. Resist it. And that was the first time I rose up like that. Wow. And uh, so I did. I said, you spirit of infirmity. Come on, everything has an identity. You talk to it. Every mountain has a voice. You know, you can talk to it. And hmm. I said, in Jesus' name, Christ has redeemed me, you know, so forth. Uh, I resisted no more. I'm redeemed. And I saw it. Uh, it was wasabi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead to that. I'm alive with Christ. So when you're meditating Jesus the is word, well. you should have some wasabi I'm experience. Well. Uh, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Woo. All right, here's the way the Lord said it to me. He said, Mark 11, 23, whosoever shall say, this mountain be removed because he shall not doubt his heart, believe those things he saith, come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith. Whatsoever. Ooh. All right, so here's what he said. He said, the authority of the believer is not just available. It is necessary. Necessary. In other words, uh, you can't just learn about that and think, well, I know that. It's not just something God's telling you that's available. It is necessary for every believer to exercise their authority. Wow. Or the Lord said it to me this way. He said, your mountain needs to hear your oh voice. Your mountain needs to hear your voice. You need to hear your pastor's voice, or you need to hear the word that's being preached to you, but your mountain needs to hear your voice. You say, and you have what you say. So the Lord said, if it was God's will for the mountain to be there, he wouldn't tell you to move it. Mm. <laughs> so he said, you have authority. Amen. That mountain represents Amen. anything that's a hindrance or that's too big for you or even strategies of the devil. So you stood up to the devil. I do. And the scripture says he runs from you. You do. And so it says that mountain will be removed mm -hmm. and cast into the sea. And you have to maintain your authority. Yeah. Stick with it. Maintain so said, the level well, of word. What do you mean it's going to be cast into the sea? He said, well, the sea has the capacity to receive the mountain, yes. dissolve the mountain, which means it's not ever coming back. Not coming back. Aha. Uh -huh. And then he said, and it also means there'll be no evidence it was ever there. Actually, years later, people will have to ask you, say, you've never had a problem like mine. You said, I had at least five problems just like yours, but I found out my authority as a believer, and I started <laughs> exercising my authority, my faith in God, my faith in the blood of Jesus, my faith in the Word, yeah. and that authority yep. that's given to every believer. Every believer. you got to use it. Tremendous power available. Now, here's, here's something I like to think about about the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So Paul didn't just learn about the death and resurrection of Christ. He saw what happened there. So I like to say the four gospels are a photograph of redemption mm -hmm. and Paul's letters are an x-ray. Same picture, different kind of picture. Actually, most people never send out an x-ray of their family for Christmas. 
It's just so hard to recognize everybody. So the four gospels tell you what happened to Christ. Paul's letters tell you what happened in Christ. In Christ. <laughs> Are y'all still here? Whoa, man, there's some in Christ revelation that everything God did in Christ, he did it for us, set to the credit of our account like we were there. That's our identification. So Paul saw yep. what happened. Paul saw it, and every believer can have the same spirit of wisdom and revelation. So I thought the whole Bible is written from the perspective of that writer having the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It is. It is. All right. That's how Moses wrote Genesis chapter 1. He saw it. He, he wasn't there. Because in the beginning, there ain't nobody there. So God must have told Moses, you want me to show you how I created the world? <laughs> All right, let's try that again. God said, Moses, you want me to show you how I created the world? He said, write this down. And so Moses wrote Genesis chapter 1. He said, when did he see that? He must have been in those times when he was in the glory. Amen. That I call, the glory. I call the Bible writers the glory writers. Because <laughs> every writers. one of them had an experience with the glory. Holy Ghost writers. Holy Ghost <laughs> glory writers. And so Moses wrote Genesis from the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Mm -hmm. The eyes of his heart mm -hmm. flooded with light. So when he saw it, he wrote it down. Praise the Lord. Amazing. He Praise saw it and it changed him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many like to ask God? Say, Father God, we know so little. I'm asking you. Let's try that again. Father God, <laughs> I know so little. I'm asking you, I'm asking you to give unto me to give unto the me spirit of wisdom the spirit of and, wisdom revelation and revelation in the knowledge of God. In the knowledge of the God. The eyes of my heart. The eyes of my heart. Flooded with light. Flooded with light. That I may know. That I may know. That I may personally know. That I may personally that know. That I may personally experience. That I may personally experience. That I may know. That I may know. The call of God. The call of the God. Inheritance the inheritance. And the tremendous power that is, available that is available to every believer. To every believer. Mountains have to move, have to and, move. The and the scenery has to change. Well, go change. ahead and shout about that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so that means if you have the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that means the Holy Spirit is on you, and the Holy Spirit is speaking on the inside of you. You're full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So we have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, recognizing him, yielding to him, saying, oh, yeah. And he talks to us. Mm -hmm. He opens things up. You know, Jesus is said about him in, in Isaiah 11. You know, he's the root of Jesse, you know, and it says, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. Yep. The spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, mm -hmm. the spirit of knowledge and of the reverential and obedient fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding, and his delight shall be in the reverential, obedient fear of the mm -hmm. Lord, shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, neither by the hearing of his ears. And it's talking about mm -hmm. Jesus prophetically. The spirit of the Lord will rest mm -hmm. on him. Well, Jesus found himself, Luke 4, he found himself mm. probably a long time before he came to Luke 4. Mm. You know, as a child, he found himself in the scriptures. He knew, this mm. is me. Mm. He found himself in Isaiah 61, and that's when he quoted mm. in Luke 4. Here wow. I am. I'm in the place God planned for me to be. Yeah, he mm. found himself in the scripture. He turned to Isaiah 61 mm -hmm. and he said, that is me. All right, you go from just information to revelation when you open the scriptures and you go, that is me. Amen. 
Amen. <laughs> One of the great keys to, to identification is revelation knowledge. Yeah. That is me right there. And so Jesus found himself in the scriptures. Actually said in the book of Hebrews, he said in the volume of the book, it is written about me. Hebrews 10. Yeah. So you find yourself mm -hmm. in the word. Come on. You find your identity, you find your healing, you find your blessing, you find your victory, and you see that in the Word, and you say, there I am right there. I'm looking a lot better than I was before I saw that. Look at that. Amen. The eyes of your heart flooded with light. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. God, where am I? Where am I? <laughs> but if you start in yeah. that prayer. Yeah. desire has been to take the foundational truths we've learned from our parents to believers. We have felt an acceleration of that assignment and now more than ever we want to take the message of faith that transformed our lives to as many people, churches, cities and nations as possible. We've been to over 30 countries but many of them again and again inspired by the word of faith are still working. We believe if we'll do our part in broadcasting on television, through the website, social media, the app, and publishing books and CDs, that God will do His part and make sure that the message lands in the right place at the right time. Kenneth Hagin said, in the last days, the printed page will be the most effective distribution of the gospel. It's amazing to hear stories of people who've received our books in very remote places, such as prisons, deep in the bush of Africa, and many other distant lands. Our desire is to have our books translated and distributed in as many languages as possible. These books can be left with pastors and leaders who in turn can share the books with others. We believe people's faith will be ignited for many generations to come. Many of the nations we go to have very little access to the teaching of the Word of God. So we not only go there, but we translate and distribute our books so that pastors and leaders can continue to feed their faith. When they are strong in faith, they are powerful. We like to picture the distribution of the word like passing out ammunition to people. Once people have the right ammo, they're able to take their authority in Christ, live victorious, and make an impact in their world. The books are so instrumental in teaching because even if it's just one book, they can read that book and then they pass it on. That message is such a tool that can go where we can't go. The Lord continues to open the doors to new countries and languages for our books to be distributed. Our vision is to have the message of faith translated in a hundred different languages. Each individual is so valuable to Jesus that he died for each and every one. And if just one person can get a hold of the word of faith in any village, any city, any country, and in any nation, that one person can change their world. The exciting thing is, when we distribute the word that God gave us, there are people God joins to us to help, and we all become partners in doing this assignment. We could not do what we're doing without our partners, and we thank God for every man, woman, and even teenager that God has joined to us to help fulfill our call. When everybody pulls together, we're able to preach the word, not only in places like Africa and India, but also through avenues such as books, CDs, TV, social media, the app, and the website. We're so thankful for our partners, and somebody on the other side of the world is telling them, thank you. You are watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. 
The greatest need of every believer is expressed in the prayers found in the chapters of Ephesians 1 and 3. Understand and experience the life-changing power in these prayers with the book by Mark Hankins, Revolutionary Revelation, Breakthrough Prayers That Take You Into a New Dimension in God. In this book, you will get a revolutionary revelation that every breakthrough in faith comes from a breakthrough in revelation. You don't need more power. You need revelation knowledge. It unlocks the power. This four CD set revelation knowledge breaks barriers and changes your identity, making you a threat to the devil. And every breakthrough in receiving the blessings of God comes from a breakthrough in revelation knowledge. Your gift of $25 or more will help Pastor Mark and Trina Hankins train leaders around the world. Order today. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you so much for tuning in today where we're talking about revolutionary revelation. I don't know about you, but there's times where I have read the word and I've read the same scripture over and over and over. And then one day I read it again and it's like, I have a revelation of it. And when you have a revelation of the word, you're able to live in the truth and the power of that word. And so it's so important to not just read the word, but gain a revelation of the word that you read. In my dad's book, Revolutionary Revelation, he talks about the powerful prayers that you can pray in Ephesians that will help you gain that insight and that revelation that you need that takes you to the next level in your faith. So I encourage you to get this book, Revolutionary Revelation. It's called Breakthrough Prayers That Take You Into a New Dimension. If you have felt stuck, you need to get this book. It will help you pray the prayers to get you unstuck and lead you into a new place of revelation. You can go to markhankins.org or call the number on the screen. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. We'll see you next time. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.